right, sing it out on the first. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Though I forget him and wander away, still he did love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I flee when I remember that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Oh, there is only one song I can sing when in his beauty I see the great king. This shall my song in eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. All right, turn over to your right one page, uh, 175. Let's sing, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, page 175. All right, on the first, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise. Just to know the same the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I pray Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, pray to Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how. Sunday, and we're thankful for all the goodness that God's bestowed upon us, and uh, want to get right into these announcements. So when I say it's a big day, I'm referencing that uh, we'll be heading out uh, after service shortly after uh, today. We're taking our 
uh, teenagers down to the Cumberland Plateau teen camp meeting. Uh, don't forget, if you're going, you got to have one of those permission slips, and you got to have your money, which is just fifty dollars per person for the week. And uh, and so we'll be again heading out today. Uh, if you haven't given me your money, please do so today, so we can get that to the camp. And looking forward to being down there. Amen. Please be praying for our young people, church. Amen. Uh, it's a big deal. And we're looking for the Lord to do some things. Vacation Bible School prep. Uh, we're going to work today. And we're going to work on the 11th between services uh, on like decorations. That's the goal. That's the focus. So uh, if you want to help with that, please do. And uh, see Miss Heather. That'd be all right. And, uh, and she'll take care of directing you with that. Vacation Bible School will be uh, June 26th through July the 1st, and uh, it's it's based on the theme of faith, and we're looking forward to it. Amen. So uh, sign-ups, do I need to address sign-ups for Vacation Bible School? Is it pretty much took care of? Uh, if, you, if you just still want to help and you hadn't signed up, let me know. Okay. Please help. Please help. June's Monthly Fellowship uh, we're going to move it to uh, uh, July the 2nd, and we're going to have a little uh, celebration for July the 4th. We'll have some fireworks. We'll have uh, some some food. Uh, we'll be inviting in a, a preacher to preach for us that evening. And uh, if you want to give towards the fireworks, uh, we have designated Chris Tucker in charge of that. Isn't that brilliant? Amen. 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 So, uh, God help us, he said. <laughs> so, Brother Chris will be taking care of that. Uh, he enjoys watching things explode. Amen. So, uh, get with him. Uh, would love to uh, have a good little show for everybody. That, again, will be July the 2nd. And if you'd like to give, you can give to Brother Chris. Brother Chris, stick your head out the door at that uh, sounder. That's Chris Tucker. He'll be taking care of that. Amen. Uh, ladies Bible study, Wednesday, 9.30. Uh, all ladies are welcome. Also, the ARC Baby Bottle Drive. We thank the Lord for the ARC, uh, uh, I can't remember what they're called, Pregnancy Center, uh, who, who defends and, and stands for life. We thank God for that. Amen. Amen. They're asking everybody to take a bottle, fill it up with change, bring it back here. They'll come get those. So I think there may be more bottles out there. Uh, so like to do that. They're going to be having a ladies sprinkle shower for Miss Heather. Uh, invitation is on the back as you can see. Well there's Oscar and that's what the baby's name is going to be. So praise the Lord. Uh, Saturday July the 8th at noon here at the church. No. At Miss Terry. Sorry I just now saw that. At Miss Terry's home and the address is on the back. Everybody's invited, okay? Um, vacation Bible School donation. We're still needing brown packing paper. If you'd like to help in any capacity with nursery and such, uh, that is also available. We've had some birthdays. Looks like Miss Noel. Hang on, let me give you one more announcement. Bible School t-shirts. How many more is always happening? Bible School t-shirts have to be ordered by Wednesday. And there's a sign-ups. All that's on the sign-up? All that information, I think? Okay. It's going to be white shirts. They're going to tie down. If you want to tie-dye your shirt, two extra dollars. Sign-ups is in the foyer. That's VBS t-shirts. Now, Miss Noel, how old are you now? 29? Like, you're really 29. That's what you're saying. Okay, yeah. You got you to gotta kind of verify that number. You know what I mean? So, uh, and that was... What is today? That was three days ago. Happy birthday. Let's give Miss Noel a hand clap. Happy birthday. And today is Miss Leanna's birthday. She also turned 29, right? Right? Yeah. How old are you really, sis? 33. Ain't that good? Let's give her a hand clap. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Praise the Lord. Sure is good to be saved, ain't it? In a world where it seems like absolutely everything else has lost their ever-loving mind, uh, I sure am glad I've got somebody I can lean on that yep. never changes. Yep. Amen. Amen. 
He's always Amen. the same. Yep. He's yep. always Amen. good. Yes. He's always gracious. Yes. And I sure do love him today. Amen. Amen. We're honored, Amen. honored that each and every one of you are here today. And I mean that. And we've come for one reason and one reason alone. And that's to give the Lord glory. Amen. Amen. It's about Amen. him. Amen. It's not about anything other than him. And if you don't know him today, uh, I sure do pray that you, you, you don't leave without getting to know him before it's too late. Uh, I think it would be right on point at this time to go to the Lord in prayer together. Remember the lost. Remember those that ought to be here today, but for whatever reason didn't make it a priority. And let's pray for the day service. Okay, everybody that's able and willing, uh, we'll gather in around the altar together. We'll go Lord in prayer. Those of you that uh, choose not to, that's fine. Help us pray in your pew as we take our time and spend some time just talking to the Lord in one mind, in one accord, uh, for he sure has been good and gracious to us so as we bow let's just take our time with him and enjoy him today he sure is good gracious heavenly father lord i thank you for this wonderful day god i thank you for your mercy thank you for lord uh, this place thank you lord for uh, your guidance your direction and your peace and your Lord, comfort, and Lord, I pray today uh, for uh, this service. Lord, bless the preaching. Uh, I pray, God, you'd help me to have liberty and unction and anointing, God, in spite of me, Lord. I pray uh, for the sake of each and every person that's here, Lord, that your word, as the scriptures promise, will not uh, return void, uh, but, but God, that you'd take it and you'd sow it in the hearts of each and every person that's here, God, and do a work, Lord, that only you can do. Lord, I pray if there be any in our midst that's never been born again, Lord, if there be any in our midst that if they died right now, God, they'd go to hell. Lord, I pray you'd convict them. I pray you'd draw them. And, Lord, I pray you'd save them before it's too late. Lord, I pray for those that's here today that might be in a storm. Uh, Lord, going through some struggles, going through some suffering, God, maybe having some seasons, Lord, of doubt. And, Lord, having a hard time, Lord, just putting one foot in front of the other. Lord, I pray that there'd be a word for them today. And, Lord, I pray they'd leave strengthened. I pray they'd leave stronger than when they came. Lord, I pray they'd put their faith and trust in your word and in, Lord, your goodness and grace. And, Lord, I just pray that you'd get glory today in everything that's done. Lord, as the choir sings, as each and every person that's here, would, Lord, not hinder, not quench the Spirit of God. But, Lord, that we'd be obedient, that we'd mind, Lord, your directing and your instruction according to the Scriptures, that we trust in you, Lord, and lean on you and not our own understanding. Lord, I, I, I sure am glad that I've learned to trust you. And, Lord, when I stray, Lord, all we like sheep have gone astray. God, I pray that you'd help me, Lord, to remember that I can trust you, Lord. Touch this church. Touch this service. Lead God and direct as you'd see fit. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Let's have the choir come. We'll sing a couple today. <laughs> started my day. God's mercy was with me all the way. His goodness day close by to meet all my needs. My Lord is taking good care As 
a journey along Good friends and a family and a place to call home The church where I worship, the Bible I read My Lord is taking good care of me But Satan comes tempting and he brings up my past I tell him I'm forgiven and it's buried at last The bloodshed on Calvary now speaks for me My Lord is taking good care of me
fire down from heaven when Elijah called on him. And though Joseph was forsaken, he was rewarded with the throne. And when David felt his heart break, he could sing this song. Every need supplied, every moment satisfied. something going on that all we've got to do is turn to him in prayer Amen. ask him for that and the Bible says that he loves us and I appreciate him this morning will there be somebody with a word on your heart so we want to say or do it this time testimony anything at all all right Brother Kevin. Well, wasn't that good singing by Amen. them bunch of youngins I tell you what that ought to stir you up a little bit, amen, in a day where it seems like young people, you know, you can't even hardly tell what they look like because they got their head down all the time. Come on, somebody help me. It's nice to see them lift their head up, rear back, and just sing for the glory of God, amen, amen. and I appreciate them being faithful in that. Grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Isaiah. Uh, we're going back in the Old Testament today. I'm thankful for the Word of God, amen. Uh, amen, the entire Word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, every word of every page uh, matters, it matters, it matters in 2023. You say, Brother Shirley, ain't that some kind of old archaic text right there? Uh, no, friend, that text is eternal, amen. Amen. Uh, it never grows old, it never changes, it is God's holy word uh, for God's people. And we need it today, and uh, now that doesn't mean that you ought to just take your Bible and uh, whatever you read, try to apply every single thing to you, because not all of it is specifically to you. Amen. You say, what are you talking about? Well, we don't have to sacrifice bulls and goats anymore today. Amen. Now it's for us, and there's so much good and truth in those writings and in those passages, but that's not to us. That's for us. And so uh, there, what, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, even in the Old Testament, there is truth there for you and me uh, that can be all the difference in the world if you'll but read it 
and listen to what the Lord has said. Amen. Amen. Here in the book of Isaiah chapter 43, uh, let's look at verse 1. Isaiah chapter 43, and we'll look at verse 1. Uh, it's good to be saved. Amen. 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 Still hear a couple pages turning. When you get there uh, with me, say amen. 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 All right. Well, the Bible says, But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, that formed thee, O Israel. So who's that talking about? Well, that's talking about the Creator, God. God here, by inspiration, is speaking to the nation of Israel, okay, by his prophet Isaiah. That's how God's word worked in this day. I'm thankful for this King James Bible. Amen. 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 I'm thankful for this King James Bible. This is God's perfect word for English-speaking people. I'm settled on that. But see, when Isaiah was talking to Israel, they didn't have a, 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 a gathered books together like we have in this Bible uh, for God to speak to them. And God would speak to them by a prophet. And Isaiah is speaking to them. Are we on the same? You say, Brother Shelley, that's simple. Well, sometimes when the preacher reads the Bible, we go in la-la land, don't we? Let me help you with something. This is the whole reason we're here today. <laughs> Uh, God, if, if, uh, if, I, if I didn't have this, I, I need to go sit down somewhere and, right. and close my mouth. Right. Because you don't need to hear what Caleb hath said. You need to hear what God hath said. Amen. And God had a word for Israel. And he gave it to them by Isaiah. And look at what it said. Verse, four, verse 1. Fear not. That's a good word for today, isn't it? Help me right there. Come on. Fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. And when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Let's bow our heads and pray with me this morning. Lord, we thank you once again, uh, Lord, for everything. And Father, thank you for each and every individual that's come out to be here in this place today. Lord, I, I pray, uh, God, that we would all, Lord, just uh, hone in our attention, our focus, Lord, on what your scriptures say. Lord, I pray that they would breathe into us a word from heaven and not from the earth, Lord. But that this book, this supernatural book that we hold in our hands would do what only you can do through it. And that we today would be helped from what thus saith the word of God. Speak to our hearts. Use this message, for it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Here in this passage, again, uh, Isaiah is speaking to the nation of Israel. He's delivering for them a word. The word is not him. The word is not from any man on this world, but it's coming from God. And God tells them, uh, Israel, you're mine. I've redeemed you. I've called you by your name. You belong, God tells them, you belong to me. Amen. Now, uh, there's a distinction, there's a division, uh, a, a dividing in the scripture in regards to the nation of Israel and the church. Okay? The nation of Israel and the church are not the, the same entity. In other words, there's some doctrine out there where people are preaching and teaching that the church is just the nation of Israel today. And that's not the scriptures. That's not what the Bible says. We're, we're two different entities. Uh, that, that idea, that way of thinking is called replacement theology. All right, And I don't want to get off into boring you here, but what they believe is they believe God's done with Israel and now the church is the nation of Israel. And that's just the farthest thing from the scriptures. Amen. You say, well, how do you know that? Because according to the scriptures, uh, there's coming a day where Jesus Christ himself is coming back. And he's coming back for that nation. Amen. That nation of Israel that, he, that, that, that belongs to him, that he chose. Now, uh, uh, again, we're not them, but guess what? We're, we're like them. You say, well, what do you mean? Because as a believer in Christ, listen to me. 
When I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I then therefore belong to Him. Amen. 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 The Bible said, know you not? You've been bought with a price. Amen. And Jesus Christ is that price. Amen. He's the price that was paid uh, so that I might not die lost and go to a devil's hell. So I'm telling you all this to see we can relate. God said, Israel, you are mine. And guess what? Church, we are His. Amen. And listen to me now. As a child of His, belonging to Him, being His property, uh, there's been some promises made to His people. Promises like, I'll never leave thee, uh, nor forsake thee. Amen. Uh, Promises that all things work together for good uh, to them that love God and who are called, thee called uh, according to his purpose. These are promises that we can take to the bank, son. Write them in stone. Nothing's going to break that promise because of who the promise giver is. Man, the promise giver is not Brother Caleb. Amen. I want to be a man of my word. I try my best to be a man of my word. But you know sometimes, and if you're being honest, you'll agree, sometimes we're so weak-minded we forget to be men of our word. You tell somebody you'll do something. You'll you'll tell somebody you'll be somewhere. And guess what? Because of our weak minds, sometimes we just forget. But there ain't nobody got a stronger mind than he is. Somebody help me. Hey, and he's never, not one time ever forgot a promise that he's made. Amen. Amen. And here with this nation of Israel, he's making a promise. He says, I will will bring thee. He says, I'll be with thee through the waters. He says, I'll be with thee through the rivers. He says, I'll be with thee through the fire. Three specific things that God mentions here for the nation of Israel. I don't know how much experience or, or uh, I don't know how much understanding you have of the Old Testament and with that nation of Israel. But these things are specifically related to massive testimonies to the nation of Israel. The first, he said, I'll be with thee. Where? Where did he say? Look at verse 2. Keep your Bibles open if you, if you can. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. First place he mentions is to the waters. Who's he talking to? Nation of Israel. Why is he mentioning these specific things, Brother Kev? Because they specifically relate to them. You say, what's the waters relate to, Brother Caleb? Keep your Bibles open. Flip to Exodus. Flip to the book of Exodus today. We won't do a lot of reading, but I'm going to get you over there so that you're familiar with what I believe the prophet Isaiah, by inspiration of God, is referencing. He said, Israel, I'll be with thee through the waters. Well, what waters could he be talking about? None other than the Red Sea. The Red Sea. And again, if you've got any history or heritage of church, you've heard of the Red Sea and Moses and God's people going through that major exodus. Listen to me now out of Egypt and into the wilderness. And according to the scriptures, what we find out there in the the book of Exodus, I said chapter 3, chapter 14, Exodus chapter 14, excuse me. There in Exodus chapter 14, we find a a bunch of people that's got a sorry mouth and attitude about them. How many of y'all ever been guilty of having a sorry mouth and attitude about you? I know I have. Amen. 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 And boy, I'm ashamed of it. Come on. I mean, God's been too good for me to be a murmuring, a sorry, and, and good for nothing Christian. Hey, that is constantly running my mouth against what God is doing and what God's got going on. And that's what Israel was doing. And there in chapter uh, 14, verse 11, the Bible says that they said to Moses, this is Israel speaking, because there was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Amen. 
They were slaves in Egypt. Do y'all realize? Listen to me. Hey, they were being abused. Uh, they were being used and manipulated. Uh, they were being taken advantage of. There was nothing good uh, for them, offered to them in the nation of Egypt. And here they are. They fled Pharaoh. They fled Egypt. And you know what they're still doing? They're still looking back at what they were in uh, with some sense of affinity. And God God, help us how foolish that is. Verse 12, is not this the word that we will tell thee in Egypt? Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For if, if it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians, then, then that we should die in the wilderness. Y'all know Egypt is a picture and type of the world, right? Drunkenness, drug addiction, fornication, adultery, idolatry, the list goes on and on, covetousness, murderings. Are y'all listening to me? Sodomy, transgenderism. It doesn't it just keep getting worse? Help me now. And sometimes if we're not careful, we get so foolish as a Christian to look back in that sorry good for nothing world uh, uh, that we were called out of, uh, uh, that God saved us out of, and for some reason we look back and think, man, if I was still out there, then maybe I'd have this good thing in my life or, or maybe I'd have that good thing in my life. And there ain't nothing, hey, there ain't nothing good being offered to nobody out there from the world. Amen. That's what Israel was doing. They're looking at Egypt like it had something good to offer. And it had nothing today. We see a frantic people. I want you to notice these waters. These waters, first of all, were waters of fear. Waters of fear. A lot's been said about fear in the past three years. I'm going to say the forbidden word, COVID. Fear. And there's nothing wrong with experiencing fear, but there's everything wrong with embracing fear. There's nothing wrong with experiencing fear. As a matter of fact, (laughs) I'm worried about somebody that ain't scared of nothing. That's a dangerous way to live. The problem is when you don't face the fear. The problem is when you think God's give you the fear. He's not giving us the spirit of fear, the Bible says. Amen. 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 Guess what Israel was doing? They was afraid. Yeah, we were slaves, but at least we had this and we had that. And out here, we just, we don't know if we've got anything. Fear. Waters of fear. We see a frantic people. We see a fight that's promised there. In verse 13, the Bible said Moses starts talking. There's that prophet. Listen to me. Hey, that word from God. Let me tell you what we need today, a word from God. Let me tell you what we needed in 2020 and 21 when it was wild across this world. We needed a word from God. We need to stop going to CNN and CSNBC and and MSNBC and, and Fox, God help us. Fox. I said we need to quit going to Fox. You said, Brother Shirley, this is the South. Look here. We need to quit going to Fox. We need to start going to the Word of God. Right. You say, how do you know we're going to Fox? Because we're hateful. <laughs> Ain't nothing make you more hateful than watching the news. Somebody say amen. 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 We need a word from heaven. Not from some talking mouth. Moses starts talking. Look what he says in verse 13. Fear ye not. Fear ye not, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you this day. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Boy, those are strong words. Amen. Verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Boy, what a, what a, what a word from heaven. huh? What a word from heaven. Where, look here, these people were legitimately scared for their life. Scared uh, for their children. Scared for what the future held. And God sent a word, and not just any word. Look, He sent this word. There is an army, and this army's pursuing from behind you. 
And this army wants to kill you. This army wants to murder you. But look, you're not even going to have to pick up your finger. You're not even going to have to pick up a sword. uh, For God is going to fight your battle for you. And you're going to hold your peace. What a God today. Amen. And the Bible says, y'all know it just as well as I do, we see a frantic people, we see a fight that's promised by God, but then we see a far-fetched profession. We see a people that goes uh, uh, up to this sea edge, and the Bible says that Moses directs them through the sea, and God puts a wall of water on their right hand and on their left hand. We see a nation of people walk through a sea on dry land with with walls of water on both sides, an army pursuing them from behind. And when they get to the other side, the Bible said God so messed with their minds that they couldn't figure out which way was up or down. And he, look here, he opened those waters back up, fell upon that army and destroyed that army. And Israel didn't lift a finger. That's far-fetched, ain't it? But don't you believe it today? You say, why? You say, why? Because it's that book. Brother Caleb, I'm scared to death about what the future holds and what I'm going through and I don't know what to do. Do you believe the Bible? Why, yeah. How many people have you heard share a testimony about their fear, what they was afraid of, what they were going through or what was coming, and then to hear them tell some far-fetched something? How many of you had God do something in your life that was so wild you was almost hesitant to tell somebody about it because you thought they ain't even going to believe it? That's my God. That's the God of the Bible. You say, Brother Shirley, I'm scared. We've all been scared. And anybody tells you they ain't is lying. What do I do about my fear, Brother Caleb? You trust the Lord. You trust the Lord. Listen, you listen to His Word. And you go right in and keep on keeping on doing just exactly what God mentioned. He said, look here, I'll go with you through the waters. And then he said this, I'll go with you through the rivers. He's talking to the nation of Israel. These are specific things. What was he talking about with the waters? I believe he was talking about the Red Sea. What was he talking about with the rivers? I believe he was talking about the Jordan River. Again, flip with me. Book of Joshua, just a couple books over. Y'all are being great listeners. Bear with me. Ain't this a wonderful book we're reading today? Amen. Amen. Ain't God's word masterful? He said, I'll go with you through waters of fear. I believe with the rivers, he said, I'll go with you through rivers of faith. Y'all know what happened. The nation of Israel does pass through that Red Sea. They send those 12 spies into Canaan land. Uh, Ten of them come back saying, ain't no way. God ain't going to do this. We just need to stay put in the wilderness. They were complacent. They were too complacent. Which is exactly the problem with American Christianity today. There's enough money coming into my bank account to pay for my bills. My children are being taken care of with their education by the public school system. Listen to me. I've got money going into my 401k. I've got plenty of money to take care of my gas, my electricity, my water. Everything's fine. God's got me comfortable. Why grow? That's where Israel was. We're in the wilderness. God's feeding us manna from heaven. He's making sure we got water. If we ain't got enough water, we can complain to Moses long enough. Maybe he'll strike a rock and water will come out of there for us. Why would we go to Canaan land? Because it was God's will. Waters of fear was the problem when they exited Egypt. And it was waters of faith. Rivers of faith when it was God's will to go into Canaan land. The Bible says Joshua was the man in charge at this time. And there in chapter 3 of the book of Joshua, the Bible tells us there in verse 13 that Joshua gives them specific instructions. It came to pass. When the people removed from their tents to pass, or that's verse 14, verse 13, it shall come to pass, Joshua speaking, bear with me, as soon as the soles of your feet of the priest that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan. Notice, the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon and heap. 
And it shall come to pass when the people, or rather, and it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as they that bear the Ark were come upon Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for the Jordan, notice, floweth all his banks all the time of the harvest, which is what time that it was. The waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city of Adam, that is beside Zeratan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all of Israel passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. What's going on? It's time of faith. They've spent 40 years in the wilderness. They've watched all of them die. All their leaders, all those spies that wouldn't go in except for Joshua and Caleb, they got to go in. Moses himself didn't even get to go in. And now was the time to go into that promised land according to God's will. And it was time to trust Him. And, and there another uh, a body of water, a river, moving water, water that they could not pass for it was the time of the harvest. And the water was high and out of its banks, the Bible said. And just like God did a miraculous thing, a far-fetched thing for the Red Sea, God was going to have to do something for the Jordan River. Right. I'm talking about rivers of faith. I'm talking about how that the Bible here tells, tells us one important truth about this fact. There was a people, listen, hey! A people who was governable. Say, so what do you mean? I'm talking about a people, listen to me. This is a cuss word in, in America. They were willing to submit. Grace Baptist, y'all have heard me say it a million times. We're American, son. These colors don't run. Get you some. Bars and stars. Come on. And I'm for that. I hope that when we go to the Olympics, we get every God-forsaken gold medal that there is. When they push that big rock down that icy skating rink and there's somebody with a brush, I'm saying brush that. I mean brush that ice, boy. We got to win this thing. What's going on? Look here, I, I bleed red, white, and blue just like the next guy. I love this country that God has blessed me with. Help me. It's a wonderful place. Submission's not a bad word. As a matter of fact, it is the characteristic of Christianity. On Wednesday nights, we're in Romans 13. If you ain't read Romans 13, you're to. It's convicting. Submit. These people were given instruction by Joshua. He said, you priests, you get the Ark of the Covenant. Not only was there a people that was governable, but there was a presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant. God's physical presence on this world. God gave them that Ark, listen to me, to be Him to them. And he said, look here, get the ark, the priest who are supposed to carry it according to what Moses said. Y'all pick it up. Don't put it on a, on a cart with cattle on it like, like everybody else does. The priests are to pack it. Y'all pick it up and y'all walk into that river. The river had not yet split. The river had not yet stopped. And he said, pick it up. And step into the river. And when you step into the river, then God will stop the water and you'll be able to cross. And guess what they did? They picked it up. They got their tents up. And they went and done what God said to do. They, here it is, submitted. Submitted their life. There's nothing in this life hardly to a fleshly, red-blooded American boy like me than to submit to what you know God wants. Amen. Even when it's just absolutely, you have no idea what the future holds. But guess what you do? Why you submit. But Brother Caleb, I don't want to. Well, that is the definition of submission. Right. Many of us today would say, oh, I've got my life submitted to God. Listen, 
but we're not doing anything for him that we don't want to do. That's not submission. That's agreeing. <laughs> Help me. Help me. Help me. When's the last time, child of God, that in his word, or by the preached word, according to his word, you came to understand God wants me to do this, and I don't want to, but I'm just going to do her anyways. And look here, it starts with our men. There's a lot of men love to beat the drum of, Wives, submit to your husbands. And every time we get home from work, we don't do nothing but run down that boss that we had to answer to all day. And why would our wives submit to somebody that don't submit to nobody else? And we get in our vehicles after church and we head to the house and we don't do nothing but run down what the preacher just preached from God's word. It starts with the men. Sir, we, me, I have to submit to him and those, listen to me, whom God has placed in authority over me. There was a people who was governable. You want to trust God? You want to look here. You want to go through those rivers? Faith starts with submission. Not only was there a people that was governor, governable, but there was a presence of God. Boy, listen to me. We need to get back to his presence. Get back to where God's at. Get back to where God's doing some things. Hey, you say, how do I find it? Well, you'll find it in his word. I beat that drum today to death. I thank the Lord for it. You'll find it down on your knees in prayer. Hey, you'll find it. The Bible said where two or three are gathered, he'll be in their midst. Come on. You'll find it at God's, listen here, God's gathering of his people. Uh, uh, and, and so oftentimes we're trying to navigate this life. Hey, we're trying to, uh, trying to uh, navigate uh, these obstacles, these rivers in our life, and we're doing it without God's presence. Look here. Joshua said, get the ark and take it out first. We want God's presence in front of us. Don't you see? Can't you see today these rivers of faith? Not only was there a presence of God, but there was a purpose that was great. Listen to me. The Bible said there in verse 17, how that when they got out in the midst of Jordan, that the ground was dry. I'm talking about a firm foundation, a purpose that's great. You say, Brother Shirley, I know God's leading me to be this. I know God's leading me to do that. I've heard him speak to me through his word. I've heard him speak to me in my prayer closet. Brother Caleb, I know it's from God, and I know that what God wants for me is to do this, but, but I'm afraid that when I get out there that something will happen, and maybe I'll fall, or, or maybe this, or maybe that. Listen to me, friend. If God's given you a word, and God has spoke to your heart, and God's given you confirmation, you know, you know God's leading you to be and do something according to his word. Listen to me. Every single time. It may be, look here, I'm talking about ground that's been saturated by a river, but I believe without a doubt we can see that if you'll just stay that step of faith, you'll find a firm a firm foundation under that foot. And then when you take that next step of faith, you know what you'll find? You'll find another firm foundation for that foot. Why? Because the purpose is great. And there's a purpose in this life for the child of God. And that purpose is Christ. Everything's about Him today. And I've never, not one time, found Him to leave me hanging high and dry. Or leave me, look here, fall in my own filth when I'm doing what He has instructed me to do. Rivers of faith. Waters of fear. But then He gave us back in Isaiah... Fires of the future. Bear with me, I'm almost done. There in Isaiah chapter 43, the Hebrew children hadn't gotten the fiery furnace. As a matter of fact, from what I can find and listen to, there's no recording prior to Isaiah 43 to anyone walking through fire. Who was Isaiah talking to? Talking to Israel. And I can just imagine Israel taking this word from Isaiah, listen, and teaching their people, look here, we're God's. Isaiah told us, God hath said, we are His. And just like He took our great-granddaddies out of Egypt, and just like He took our granddaddies across the Jordan, He's going to take us through fiery trials, which is to try us. 
And I can just see them little ones saying, wow, nobody's ever went through fire, but God said that we could and that he'd bring us through them. And we know that he will because he brought us through waters and he brought us through rivers. And I say, amen. amen. Right. But guess what? Hadn't been through them. And what did Israel go through? They went through the judgment of God. Amen. Babylon hits the scene. King Nebuchadnezzar was the baddest one dude. Y'all think Hitler was bad? Read your Bible. Amen. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar was a freak of nature. And Nebuchadnezzar shows up with Babylon and what do they do? They seize the people of Israel. They bring them in and the first problem they deal with is an idolatrous idea. We're talking about the fire. We're talking about fires of the future. We see this idolatrous day that Israel went through. And Nebuchadnezzar sets up an image and what does he say? He says, look here, hey, everybody is to bow to that image. And there was three boys, Hebrew boys. And all their life, maybe, just maybe, they had heard. He brought us through the waters. He brought us through the, the rivers. He said he'd bring us through the fires. And, and, and Moses was clear, we are not to have any other gods before him. And Nebuchadnezzar is saying that we're to worship this idol in this idolatrous day. They done made their mind up, y'all. We ain't a bow one. You know what we're living in today? An idolatrous day that is being covered up with culture and, 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 and marketing. I don't know where you stand, but I know where I stand, and that's on the Bible. I'm thankful for what's happened in the sanction of life and protection of the unborn. Amen. 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 New Mexico has a satanic temple starting an abortion clinic. Don't tell me it's not an idolatrous act. And guess what? It's always been. Oh, Brother Caleb, that's just women not wanting to bear their children. No, friend, in the background of that whole mess was a satanic ritual of sacrifice of our children on this land. Don't you dare be so deceived to think that that's not the case. Because now that they're trying to shut it down, and I thank God, a blatant satanic temple is starting an abortion clinic, listen to me, and they're going to chalk it up under a religious action of sacrificing unborn babies. This is an idolatrous day. Amen. Oh, oh yeah. And Americans have been deceived this whole time. You know what them boys said? We'll stand. Why? Because... took them through the waters and the rivers. He'd take us through that burning, that burning furnace. We see an idol idolatrous day. I'm wrapping up. Y'all are being great now. We see, a, we see a various doctrine. We see these compromise. What did everybody else in Israel do? They bowed. You know what the church is doing today? Bowing. Bowing. Bowing to the idolatry of transgenderism, which is the worship of self. Bowing to sodomy. Bowing to all this filth. And let me help you with something. We got to have somebody stand up and say, I'll, I'll, I'll not bow. Help me now. We'll, we got to have somebody that will say, in this idolatrous day, uh, in this various doctrine where people are shifting and changing and acting like this is okay and acting like that is okay and trying to act like the Bible's not God's word and, 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 look here, and abandoning the truths that we know to be right. Why? To try to appease the people of this world and to try to appease the flesh of God's people and the flesh of this world. And look here, hey, we need some people today that says in this fire that is to come, if you don't think there's a fiery trial coming to this land, uh, you're deceiving yourself today. There's no telling what tomorrow holds. But I'm thankful I know. <laughs> I'm thankful I know who holds tomorrow, friend. And he's made us a promise. That in those fiery trials of the future That everything's going to be just fine I don't know Look here I, There's individual fiery trials I don't know what you're going through with your family I don't know what you're going through At your place of employment 
I don't know what you're going through with your friends and your relationships out in this life. I've got no idea what's going on between your ears, but I know what the Bible said. We saw the idolatrous day, the, the various doctrines, but we see a victorious deliverer. They go into that fiery furnace. Y'all know it better than me. Nebuchadnezzar says, I thought we just put three. Maybe one of them soldiers fell in there that died. No, it can't be one of them soldiers. He's standing. They're all standing, he said. He said, somebody tell me, did we not put three in there? They said, yeah. Yeah, Lord, we just put three. He said, well, I see four. Look here, church. And just like the King James says, he said, and the fourth man looks like the son of God, not the sons of the gods. The son. Amen. <laughs> The Son of God, he said, is in there with them. I've watched my whole life, I've listened my whole life to the testimonies of those before me about what God's done, how God's done this and God's done that. I'm thankful. God ain't done. God's done some things, but God ain't done. You say, what's the title of this? That's probably what I'd call it. That's pretty good. It just came to me. Yeah, God has done some things, but he sure ain't done. You know what? Each one of those, those three things mentioned, the waters, the rivers, and the fire, there's a specific word tied to each one, and it's the word, here it is, through. And you can't get through unless you get on the other side of it. And he said, I'll bring you through. And he said, I'll bring you through. And he said, I'll bring you through. Are y'all with me? God ain't done. No, he's just getting started. And so oftentimes we hear about all these meetings and all these things. And you know what? If we ain't careful, we'll get more focused on worshiping the meetings and the things than we do the God. And if we'll get back to him, there ain't no telling what he'll do but I promise you this he'll bring you through maybe it'll be far fetched maybe it'll be some miracle like nobody's ever heard maybe God will use you like he ain't never used nobody I don't know but I know he'll take you through it help me now Amen. I know that no matter what he'll be good to us even the Bible said to the ends of the world let's stand to our feet let's have a song at this time I'd like to have a time of invitation y'all have been great listeners I want to appreciate that in a day where we can watch a movie for three hours. It's nice to see people listen to some preaching for just a short time.